the National Law Enforcement Week Remembrance for those law enforcement officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice uh, so that we can uh, live in freedom and safely each and every day. Today we are here to honor and pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice and given their lives to keep our country and our community safe. Today, 38 plus law enforcement officers have been killed so far this year. That is unacceptable. Vehicle crashes and shootings make up 71% of those deaths. Today, there are more than 900 law enforcement officers throughout the United States. That is more than ever before. According to the FBI's UCR report, 1.16 million violent crimes occurred last year. Fortunately, that was a decrease of 4.4%. And it's always good to see crime, particularly violent crime, decrease. Crime fighting has taken its toll, though. And ever since 1791, when the first officer was killed, and that officer was recognized, there have been more than 20,000 law enforcement officers throughout the country that have given their lives. And in fact, there are 20,538 names on the law enforcement memorial wall in Washington for those that have made the ultimate sacrifice. Each May, during the candlelight vigil, those officers' names are added to the wall and they are each recognized in a formal manner. There were 117 law enforcement officers killed in 2014. That is a 10% increase from the year before. That is unacceptable. Of those, 50 were killed with firearms. That was 56% of those killed, and that increased. Sadly and continually, the state of Florida ranks high in the death of law enforcement officers. And in fact, last year, they ranked fourth out of the United States. And as Florida law enforcement officers and those who support them, that's not a good position to be in. That is not acceptable. Therefore, it is on this day that we honor those and remember those who gave their lives as fallen heroes, not only here in Collier County, but throughout the entire United States. In doing so, we have a uh, special speaker with us today. Aaron Norris, he's a retired Army Sergeant and Film Director. Aaron lives in Naples with his wife of 34 years, Rebecca. They have three children, Tyler, Megan, and Amanda. <coughs> It is my honor to introduce to you our friend, my friend, Aaron Norris. Thank you very much. Um, I'm humbled by that introduction. I, uh, it's a lot of years, it's a lot of years. I'm getting older. Um, my wife made me take notes, you know, because she kept reading what I was going to say. She said, no, don't say that, don't say that, you know, so. Uh, I know this is a memorial service, but uh, um, I kind of would like to consider it also a, a, a celebration and a remembrance of our loved ones that we've lost. Uh, they made the ultimate sacrifice of all their tomorrows so we can be safe today. I know there's a lot of mothers and fathers and, and uh, husbands and wives and daughters and sons out there of uh, law enforcement officers who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, and I don't want to forget the, their loss as I understand it. And loss is a great word for that. I, I work and speak with uh, an organization called TAPS, which is Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. It's for uh, families who lost loved ones in combat. It's the same thing. I mean, we're all serving our country, and um, it's the same feeling. One thing I've realized and we've understood and we, as a, as a group, is loss really says it well. It's a huge loss in our lives. It's been 45 years since I had, sorry, I told 
she's not going to have to do this, uh, since I lost William, but I think of him daily. And um, so it is always a loss in your life. It's not that we shouldn't continue to live well because he didn't want me to. And I honor him by doing that. So, but as a filmmaker, I've directed and produced hundreds of shows uh, on television and, and, and movies and movie theaters. And I've created a lot of make-believe heroes. But they're make-believe heroes, and the real heroes are, a lot of them are sitting right here and in this room. When I enlisted, a few months later, we enlisted. And, uh, and we did everything together. You know, and, and he wanted to serve our country together. So when then I got uh, recognized and sent to the Non-Commissioned Officers Academy, uh, as the sheriff said, um, which, um, and I signed a contract to go to a combat zone in Vietnam in those days. And I wanted, I was looking, I mean, I was training hard for it. And um, I thought that I wanted to go, but I, I was well trained for it. But we even got there just before me, and um, I lost him, lost him in combat. Um, heroic, he, he was a, heroically, though, I lost him. Um, he saved the men in his platoon. But a week later, I had a letter from Wheeling. This is a week after I buried him. And um, so I was kind of like taken back by, you know, looking at a letter from him. And uh, knowing that I just buried him, so I opened it up and read it. And he said something in that letter that gave me comfort. And uh, what he said was, he said, he said, little brother, I actually got it out and looked at it before I came here. He said, little brother, I've never felt closer to God than I do right now. And that was the morning before he got dead. So someone denied God, I dare you. You know, uh, he was, God was sending me comfort by doing that. Um, we get comfort in a lot of ways, but again, I feel uh, we always will have that loss, but we, living, you know, does get a little easier. It does get easier. Our nation is stronger, and it's stronger because in the front lines of this, uh, of our, is our law enforcement. They're, they're in the battlefield right now. And uh, so, you got to continue to answer the call and continue to fight this extremist and this terrorist. I mean, you've got to save our nation. You know? and, uh, and it's it's you who's in the front line. And I, for one, am going to be a voice that will be out there saying this continually. So a lot of you who are sitting out there right now, I want to thank you for all your service. and uh, and. When your service also, what you're doing is you're carrying forward the work of our fallen officers. And I saw their pictures up here just now, and I, I just, you know, such wonderful people I would have loved to have known. And, uh, but you're honoring them by what you do and by how we live. That honors them also. And that's the best way we can honor them and making sure their legacy <coughs> continues uh, forever. Today and forever. So until then, we just keep fighting the good fight. I heard the uh, pastor say, uh, "Let's be the peacemakers." I, I I love that. I was going to say it also. <laughs> uh, his prayer was was magnificent. It was a great prayer. Um, but I just want to say that I'm proud uh, of you all, and I'm proud to be here, and I'm humbled to be here, uh, especially. And within this group and the families. Um, and I'd love to meet more of the families if I can. But anyway, God bless you all and thank you very much.